Hello, and thank you for tuning in to The G Show. I'm your host, Gabriella. Thank you for tuning in to another fun and an informative show. Today, my special guest is Teresa Klein from the Rare Earth Rare Earth Gallery, Unique Handmade Art. I just want to make sure I said everything correctly. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today, well, thank Teresa. Thank you for having me. You look so lovely, and you've bought, you brought so many amazing goodies from your gallery. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you here today. So thank, thank you. you so thank much. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. So your gallery is, number one, it's spectacular. Thank the you. artists and the items that you have are like unparalleled to any other gallery I've ever seen. Really unique, curated artists and items that they that they have. So tell me a little bit about your story and how you became involved with the gallery. Well, I, it was very serendipitous actually, because about a year and a half ago, exactly a year and a half ago actually, I um, started my, I began at the gallery, and uh, it's, it happened because I was teaching at a charter school in North Carolina at the time, and I loved my teaching job. And before that, I had been a curator, and I had been an assistant director in a museum and mm -hmm. different galleries, and had also taught uh, art history, and my background is in art history and painting. Oh, okay. And so I, you know, I just thought there was something else for me. I, I wasn't quite sure what that was. Oh, like a calling or something that was just like you enjoyed what you're doing, but it was like you're ready for like the next fun fill adventure chapter of your life, I guess. Exactly. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm sort of at that end chapter, not really the end, but getting, you know, the toward end? that not that working the, kind of thing. <laughs> I or? was hoping one day I would not be working, but if I, if I were going to be working, I wanted it to be in a field that I love and have a soulful experience, a meaningful experience. Mm -hmm. And also, I love the idea of promoting and sharing and shepherding uh, other artists. I'm an artist myself, and I know what that feels like, and I know what it feels like to create and and um, to to want to put yourself into that process and out into the world. So, And, and that is like such a nerve-wracking, as an artist myself, I'm a jeweler and painter and everything else, and to be able to put that out there, it just leaves you so open and vulnerable. It is terrifying. It, it is really honestly is. The, one of the scariest things, because you're, you know, when you make a piece of artwork, you're putting your heart and soul into it, and then you're just opening yourself up to everything. So you're like give a platform to all these amazing artists to create their or to showcase their artwork. It's true. And, you know, one thing I find is that when you let go of a piece of art and it, it really is not necessarily yours anymore, That's it becomes, true. you know, it becomes the viewers, it becomes someone else's. And they then impart their views and their ideals and their, um, I guess, Whatever they want that to be, it becomes. And so it's not necessarily yours anymore. That's so, a, that's And that's kind of a it. hard thing for artists to it let is. go of, yeah, of things. I have a lot of pieces I've never sold or given away because I've liked them. I'm like, what's the point of me doing this if I'm just going to keep everything that I made? Exactly. What's exactly. the point? <laughs> so it's difficult to do that. It's it, not always easy. It's true. And so, well, anyway, <laughs> so what happened was I was looking for a business and I, I was looking in North Carolina. I kind of wanted to be by the ocean. I didn't know for sure where. And all of a sudden I see this business opportunity and uh, the, the people were retiring and it had been in business since 1976. I had seen that, which Very is incredible. Very long time. And so I, I felt like, you know, this might be something to inquire about. And I did and started to garner some information. Mm -hmm. And then um, my sister, who lives in Orlando, and her husband decided to surprise me and come to Stewart from Orlando oh and check out this gallery. Oh, wow. And they walked out of there, and they were videotaping, and she called me and she said, guess where we are? And I said, I, you know, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But they had come to see the gallery and to meet uh, Steve Binder, oh, wow. who was one of the former owners, and um, and it just went from there. I I came. I knew it was right. And it just all the pieces the fell gallery. together. That's yep. really bought amazing. The gallery, so, and it's changed, uh, you know, somewhat since Steve and Becky had it, um, but it's um, it still has a lot of the very 
a remarkable artist it, that really we had incredible. before, and then we have some new ones. So, yeah. and what different kinds of what different like not modalities, but what different kinds of art do you have? Because you have so many. We do. We have many genres. We have paintings and pieces of art on in that are two dimensional, such as this piece over here, the With sea the turtle. turtle. That's amazing. That turtle is by that. Molly Pierce, and she is the first artist I found oh, wow. when I when I bought the gallery. Okay. And she's remarkable. She does these works of art by painting first, and then she layers all these glazes on a piece of wood, mm -hmm. and then she mounts this piece and. Uh, it's through a digital process that she then goes back in and embellishes, and then she treats it with a commercial sealer. So it could go on a lanai. Oh, it could wow. go. Isn't that, that's like just, perfect for yes, South Florida, it, too, with our, beautiful with our humidity and everything else. All kinds of sea animals. And yeah. And then you have a lot of sand art, too. Does this go upside it down? It does. It just turns this way. This is by Exotic Sands. Oh, look at that. Oh and it's gosh. sort of kaleidoscopic. <laughs> and it just oh, I um, love that. creates it's like a, a jellyfish. new... It, it creates a new landscape or seascape every time. So that's pretty remarkable, too. And this is a piece by Carol Merritt, who is a local artist. She's from Fort Pierce. She uses a mixed media process mm -hmm. and um, creates things that are maybe little things with shells and, okay. and uh, different media like that. This one is a little house, as if you saw it, you know. Like on, in Key on West the in, exactly. in Duval, on Duval Street. I love that because the amount of detail and the amount of paint and layering of the colors is amazing. I would like physically go blind trying to paint something that small, but it's really remarkable. And then my favorite item, which is this globe, is so incredible. I am so blown away by this. Would you like to hold it? I got lotion on my hands. I don't That's know if okay. it's going to slip it's out okay. of my hands it's or not. Okay. Look at this. So I got the world in my hands, literally. <laughs> <laughs> this is Earth with Clouds by Mova Globes. A physicist in California invented this. And um, it, it turns basically just using ambient light mm -hmm. because it has magnets and solar cells inside. It turns with the magnetic force of the Earth, and it will turn the other direction if you go south of the equator. Isn't that something? <laughs> but there are all kinds. There, and this is the smallest size. This yeah. is the and four that, and a half. This has got like a good weight to it as well. It does. And I know that you have other planets, and don't you have like other planets from the solar system, and then you have the moon. Other versions of the Earth. Um, a white and gold, a copper and black, a blue and silver, an antique terrestrial, which shows the voyages of, of uh, Captain Cook um, in the 1700s. Oh, wow. We have all the planets um, and the three sizes, the small and the next size is a six inch. And then there's the big one, the big one which oh, is an I eight and a half imagine. inch. So those are fantastic. And, and everybody loves them because they're mesmerizing. They're really incredible. Like I can't take my eyes off it. My cats would go crazy if I, I had know. that in the house. I would I love to have that somewhere, but with my cats, there's just, there's not a way anything's going <laughs> to happen. And then this as well, which I thought was super interesting. This is a 3D wood sculpture basket or what would it you It is. It is exactly. This? That's exactly right. This is amazing. All made out of a single piece of Baltic birch. I mean, that's So this is Baltic by design. Okay. All com and there are several different variations on this. Um, and that's this amazing. one is called fern and it has sort of a geometric outline. You can also, if you don't want to stand it up, you, you could use it for bread or something like that, but you could also put a candle inside oh, that's in a really votive. Nice. And, that's a nice idea. And it, it shoots, yeah. shoots light out like a sort of a Moroccan kind of I feeling. love that. I have Very those all beautiful. over my house, the lanterns, inside and out. I love those everywhere. Yes. Now, how many different artists do you have um, mm -hmm. at the gallery? We now have about 65. That's a lot of artists. It's a lot of my artists. My goodness. And how is it that you go about finding an artist like that's got to be that's such a unique and special thing to find like the right fit into all the artwork and the feel of the gallery as well well certainly I inherited some artists and a few of these I have inherited from the former mm -hmm. owners um, we scout at craft shows we scout at major shows throughout the United States there's one in Philadelphia one in Atlanta um, I go to um, this and Molly Pierce goes to many shows okay. and she has she's only in one other gallery in Virginia oh, wow. and with us and oh, she's one best in show in Florida. So I think I keep my eyes open. There are also private sites and sites where, you know, you can sort of 
uh, like Indie Me, where mm -hmm. artists uh, put the, their works and wares on that or fair. It's kind of like their portfolio, and you can see like the kind exactly. of work that they do. Oh, right, okay. and so you can buy those wholesale. And then some artists we consign, which means um, that we give them a portion and they, you know, of we, course. It, we split it, basically. Is that what you usually do, or do you sometimes just buy the items out like wholesale and then... Like, because I, I make jewelry, you know, as I mentioned, everybody in the world knows this. And I've been looking for some galleries, but sometimes they want to do it, like, on consignment. But it's, sometimes it's just easier just to get paid, and then you don't have to, like, you know, stay in direct contact all the time. Did this piece sell? Do you still have this one? Right. Do you need some new inventory? Can I bring you something else? Well, certainly with a lot of our jewelry artists and Exotic Sands, uh, Baltic by Design, Mova, we purchase outright oh, okay. wholesale. And we have a contract with them, and then we purchase those things. Other artists, mostly with paintings and two-dimensional mm -hmm. work, we will do a consignment oh, agreement. Okay. And sometimes artists come to us, and um, you know, if if anybody wants to, they can uh, send us an email. Send me an send email. Send her an email. <laughs> yep. At, Budding in, artists. <laughs> and then I take a look, and if I feel it's a good fit for the gallery, then we go that direction. And so. how many art? How many artists do you think you can comfortably have like represented in the gallery? I'm pretty much right now I would, at the top end. <laughs> I would think so. That's <laughs> that's a lot of space to cover in your gallery. It is. It's we're so lucky because we're right in the center of of Stewart. Mm -hmm. And we're right beside the Gafford, right in between the Gafford and Tootsie. So we're right there in the middle. That's a great and location. And it's a great location. We have two entrances, but we only have 1,700 square feet mm -hmm. and very, very little uh, storage space. Yeah. So I can only take so many at a time and show so many at now, a time. Now, do you rotate like artists? Do you have anyone that you have featured in a certain part of the gallery and then change like the, the work around so it just makes it look a little fresh sometimes like just to move things around different artists do you Each, spotlight anybody in particular or well sometimes we do for example ken dara who does our gyotaku which is a fish printing process okay. it's an ancient fish printing process he might come in and do a workshop or do a, a demonstration mm -hmm. and then we'll feature his work for that okay. um, michael ann bellergeau who's a fantastic painter she i think will be here for the craft show and she often paints plein air outside of our oh, gallery wow. and then people oh, watch wonderful. her and so that's pretty cool um, it, so at times we do that. Okay, at times. I, I was just curious. Yeah. Like I've always wanted to have like your gallery on and have you come on. So I'm so thrilled that you're here. Well, may I tell you one other thing? Oh, These yes. little earrings. I was going to ask you right about those. Here, they so were ingenious. just here as um, they were here for a trunk show. Okay. This, these are earrings by Jabibo, and they are made of just. They're made out of recycled cereal boxes it's if you can a, even believe that i can't so even believe that and there's so there's absolutely no weight to these at all i know Those and, are like and the they're asymmetrical earrings. they don't necessarily match I they love have everything that, from manatees to butterflies to luna moths curiosity and kitty cats we have I love kitty the cats, cats. like my there's, favorite there's your little kitty cats i know i yep. love that those are super so cute all of those yes and right now we are featuring highwaymen paintings. I had seen that and I was amazed at the amount. You have like 30 pages very, of highwaymen paintings. How in the very world lucky. did that even come about? I, it, again, serendipity. Oh I just think gosh. sometimes we're led to things. I, I admired them for a very long time and when I was teaching, you know. And so coming to Florida and seeing their view of a pristine environment that, you know, was not participating in urban development at the time. I they know. were looking yeah. at things that were really, really beautiful. And they show us, uh, you know, and what a history. It's what an amazing history. history definitely. So I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled and honored to have them. Well, I if really you're interested am. in seeing, I think, like the most highwaymen paintings <laughs> in like one location you could ever find, Rare Earth Gallery is definitely a place to see them because that's incredible. I know every once in a while they'd have like some exhibits like down south. Like, you know, in my neck of the woods, like in uh, Wellington and West Palm. They do. They have, they like, do. an event there at the Swampy Grass Preserve, I know, like, once oh. in a blue moon. I've never, never I'd had a chance. I'd love to go to that. It's a great preserve. You would love it. It's, it's Oh, incredible. I would love that. Yeah, it's really yeah, amazing. Yeah, and so I, at the Elliott the other night, I was able to see Roy McClendon, who's 90 years old. Oh, my gosh. And his son um, paint 
you know, and see their some of their older paintings, some of their newer paintings. It's it's like I said, it really is an honor. It to really do that. it's really incredible. And I meant to ask you, what did you teach when you were in North Carolina? What was I taught art? <laughs> Go <laughs> figure. I was visual wasn't arts, sure. art okay. appreciation, art history, and also in DC and Ohio. So oh, yeah, okay. been around a little All bit over. in that regard. So. I always like to say everybody from Florida like has like a story of like where they came from <laughs> and drifted and down. drifted. <laughs> but you've done like the whole range. You're you're an artist. You are a curator, and now you have a gallery. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty much, that's Very incredible. Blessed. Now, what do you see for the gallery, let's say, like in the next five years? Well, I just, you know, in terms of the highwaymen, we only have a certain number. Exactly. I mean, right now with, yeah. with a docuseries coming out and all the other things happening, there will ultimately be a stop to what I can get in terms of the highwaymen. But these kinds of artists, and to keep sort of my finger on the pulse of, of what's happening in Florida, to keep local artists involved, but also to keep some diversity. And I love the idea, like of your jewelry, people's jewelry being in there, pe things people can wear. Of course. We have Native American collection there, you know, just to keep things well-rounded, I and, think. And also it's a nice selection of everything that like really identifies like this part of Florida as well with the artwork and the and the jewelry and these magnificent globes that I'm absolutely <laughs> obsessed with. Oh my gosh, so you've got like so many different kinds of artists. And do you have any kind of events or anything that's coming up? Well, the you know on the horizon, <laughs> have you planned anything? Well, person you know in terms of just our gallery we have not at the moment we're hoping soon to have a trunk show uh, with one of our jewelers and that I don't have a date for that yet okay. the craft show the Stuart craft show is this weekend oh that's right. so and that that's is perfect. and it's not just craft it's art and craft mm -hmm. and uh, we found another one of our artists there that you know driftwood sculptures that we're lucky to have. So that event is coming up. Every time Stuart has an event like that, it sort of highlights us in a way of because course. people come and go up and down the streets and then our door is always open. Of course. So. And it's always nice to do that instead of people driving, people walking through. So you have like a captive audience, which is nice because it brings like a really nice concentration of people to that area. Exactly. Oh, wonderful. Yep. And now where can everyone find your Rare Earth Gallery? Where can they find us? Yes. At 41 Southwest Flagler Avenue, right in the center of Stewart. And um, I'm there almost every day. Every We're closed day. on Tuesdays. Oh, well, that's <laughs> nice. So you have one day I have off. have one day you off. You have to have that. And it's funny to be closed on Tuesday, but people are still lingering on Mondays. Uh, of course. So I love being open on Mondays. I think Monday's always a nice day to be open, you know, because a lot of places you expect to be closed, they want it like a longer weekend. Mm -hmm. So that's always nice. Yes. Well, I can't thank you enough for being here. This has just been an absolute joy. And I've learned so much about all the amazing artists that you have at your gallery. Thank you. And it's so interesting to hear your personal story as well. Thank I got to ask you about the curating thing because I've always, that was always seemed like a fun job to have. Anyways, <laughs> well, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of The G Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day. And until next time.